Cameroon's opposition and civil society have launched a mass campaign to combat voter apathy. The goal is to encourage disgruntled youths to register to vote before the August deadline and go to the polls in presidential elections next year instead of just complaining that longtime President Paul Bia will rig elections to die in power. There are about 15 million potential voters in Cameroon, but only 7 million are registered voters. Moki Edwin Kitsaka reports from Yaoundé, Cameroon. Un citoyen, une carte d'électeur. Si on a 20 ans, on doit avoir sa carte d'électeur. Sortez, sortez, sortez. About 20 opposition and civil society members shout using loudspeakers on the streets of Cameroon's economic capital, Douala, that all civilians of voting age should register to qualify as voters before the August 31 deadline. Cameroon's presidential elections will take place in October 2025 on a date to be decided by 91-year-old President Paul Bia, who has ruled the Central African state for more than four decades. Among the campaigners is Mba Raoul, spokesperson of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, or CRM Party. The spokesperson says Cameroon's opposition and civil society want civilians, especially reluctant youth, to register now and to vote and defend their votes when elections are called. If we are really feeling these pains that this government has inflicted to Cameroonians for the past 40 years, we have to come out in 2025, vote massively and protect our votes. We should be the ones to choose our leaders. We have to combat electoral fraud by voting massively and protect our votes. Opposition and civil society estimate that at least half of Cameroon's 30 million people are 20 years and older and qualified to register and vote in elections as stated in the country's electoral code. Elecam, the country's elections management body, reports that about 7.3 million civilians have registered for future elections. Opposition and civil society say high voter apathy is due to the belief that votes do not count because Bia rigs all elections to stay in power. Bia has won all elections since he took power in 1982. The opposition accuses him of what it calls massive electoral fraud. Catholic Archbishop Andrew Nkea of Bamenda capital of Cameroon's English-speaking Northwest region, says civilians should not be discouraged because it is a divine responsibility for all citizens to register and vote. Many Cameroonians are skeptical, but we cannot always presume that our vote will not make sense. If people go out massively to vote, their voice will make a difference. And it is very important for those who are organizing elections to ensure that elections are free, Elections are fair, and that elections reflect the minds of the voters. Nkeya said all political parties and civil society groups should educate civilians, especially youths who refuse to take part in the elections, to know that it is their democratic right to determine who their leaders should be. On Monday, Elekam said there was an increase in the number of potential voters in their branches in all towns and villages of Cameroon. They also dismiss claims that they rig elections to favor Bia. Elvis Mbogo is Elecam's manager for Cameroon's English-speaking Northwest region. He told State TV on Monday that opposition parties and civil society groups are gradually noticing that the elections body plays a neutral role in polls. The situation on the ground is changing. I see more politicians running to the field, galvanizing people to come out and register. I'm already establishing a good relationship with the civil society, not only the civil society, all political stakeholders. That's why we set up our objective to work with all stakeholders, and especially the media. At 91, Bia is the world's oldest president and second longest serving leader after his neighbor Teodoro Obiangema of Equatorial Guinea. Bia has been in power for 41 years. Before becoming president, he served for seven years as prime minister. Moki Edwin Kinzaka, VOA News, Yaoundé, Cameroon. Deadly floods are wreaking havoc in many parts of East Africa that face torrential rainfall with Burundi calling for international help to deal with the aftermath. 
Lake Tanganyika's rising waters have invaded the port of Bujumbura, Burundi's economic capital, disrupting business there and elsewhere in the country that relies heavily on donor support to run government programs. We are issuing this statement to ask our development partners to combine efforts with the state of Burundi to help all people affected by these disasters, Interior Minister Martin Niteletse said April 17th. Between September and April 7th, some 200,000, 3,944 people were affected by flooding, with 19,250 homes and 209 classrooms destroyed. The number of people internally displaced by flooding rose by 25%, reaching over 98,000, according to Violet Kenyana Kachomia, the UN resident coordinator in Burundi. Burundi is one of the world's poorest countries with 80% of its 13 million people employed in agriculture, according to the World Bank. Flooding there has created serious scenes like game rangers entering the waterlogged Rusizi National Park in Ekano. The Boulevard du Japon, a major highway in Bujumbula, has been flooded in recent days. Climate experts say flooding in, Bujun, in Burundi and elsewhere in the region is part of extreme conditions linked to the El Nino weather phenomenon. While climate change is the trigger, the impact of, of the flooding is exacerbated by poor land use planning that does not take into account areas at very high risk of flooding. myself wondering oh, what did happen to the last 10 I ran away with my life fast forward never turn back again it's kind of funny that the more we pass time the more we need to set the rewind and 19 was the year I had to leave you but now I'm seeing all the signs is this really happening I can't believe it's true I'm just as surprised as you Without you, I never could have moved away. But now I seek what you teach. I do believe. 